So I want, we've been talking about emotions a lot. We've been talking, we were talking about fear for a few weeks. And then last week we talked about how to work with, how to be with emotion. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of emotion and then how that applies to how you might use meditation technique to, um, to approach your emotional life. Um, Emotions are a complex uh, thing that happens in our body mind. So an emotion is not a simple thing. In fact, it's probably not even, it's not even really a real thing, okay? It's a thing that is um, constructed up out of multiple parts of what it is to be a human being. Maybe animals have emotions, but many of the things that look like emotions in animals are going to be radically different than what an emotion is in a human being because there's such a mental component to our emotions. The foundation of emotional life, though, is physical and ancient, right? So it's been the, the foundations of our emotional system have been built into us through evolution for, you know, millions of years. And that means that when we're working with an emotion, we're working with multiple stages of our evolutionary heritage, or another way of putting that, multiple levels of our human being. We're not just, it's not just all one thing. Oh, there's an emotion. I'm having an emotion. It's some simple thing. It's a thing that reaches deep down into our body, into our history, into our nervous system, into our autonomous nervous system, the parts of our nervous system that are not under our control. And it goes all the way up to the most mental like thoughts and actions that are under our control. And it's a structure. And so when we say, I'm afraid, I'm having fear right now, there is something basic and universal about that. Some basic and universal things that will happen in the body. And there's some basic and universal things about what might be happening in the mind in a fear state. But there's also something incredibly complex, unique, and um, individual about any particular emotion. It's really important to know what I'm saying here as we start to think about our emotions, because when we dive into an emotion, if we choose one level to work at, that can be okay, but we ignore that it has all these other levels, then we will, uh, it will be self-defeating, okay? There can be little progress made. You're like, ah, oh, yes, I'm working on the mental part of my emotion and it's starting to feel, I'm starting to see that and that can make progress. But if, if you ha aren't aware of the physical part, then that, that physical part will just come up and generate a, some other type of mental activity that will re recreate a, a similar emotion. So an emotion is a complex of interrelated parts that are all affecting each other. And let's, so I'm going to simplify this, but I do want you to know that's even more complex than what I'm saying here, because it's not just, it's not just surface sensations. Ultimately, ultimately it's a, a different levels of the human being are all, are all coming on board into one kind of experience. Now this could be said of any human experience, honestly, it's just that in the emotional world, we're dealing with things that are very powerful that have strong motivational influences that um, are hard to, that can create real patterns. So it's much more important to be aware that all of this is happening all at once. But the simplest way to talk about an emotion is as an experience in where there's emotional feel in the body. So there's some sensations in the body that we would call emotional that have a qualitative element, that they're not about sensing the external world, right? There's sensations in the body that are somehow internal sensations. And for those of you who have never tried this, I think everyone on Zoom knows exactly what I'm talking about. But for those of you who've never tried this, it might sound like, well, what is that? It's something you can pretty much, you can observe. You go, oh yeah, that's an emotional feel. Right. And there's some that are a little confusing. Is that my, is that health? Is that a physical feel? Or is that an emotional feel? Absolutely. There's things that are confusing. 
but it's fairly easy to distinguish between the vast majority of things that are like, oh, I'm feeling the ground with my hand. That's a physical sensation. And I'm feeling sadness in my chest. And that's not about the external world. It's some other internal emotional sense. Okay, so that's part of an emotion. And in some sense, it's the iceberg that's under the, under the water of the emotion for most, human, most people in the West, at least. I'm not culturally expert on other areas of the world, but at least in the, in the Western world, we mostly live in our heads and we think of our emotions as stories and they're up here. But the, I, the, the, the vast weight and power of the emotion is coming from the body. And the reason it seems to take us over or overwhelm us or be rep or, or, or ignore any rational thoughts we might give it, right, is because it's a, it's a body thing. Just like you can't talk yourself out of nausea most of the time, <laughs> right? You can't talk yourself out of the body feel of fear. You can't, you, you, most of the time, you can't do that, right? Okay, so it's the body sensation, and then it's going to be mind, it's going to be words in the mind, which are going to be narratives that, that fit the emotional feel. So we'll work with fear again, I'm scared, I got some jitteriness in my body, and then my mind will say something about there being danger, oh, this is going to happen, and I'm going to be, oh, it's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, uh, that they're really going to hurt me, I'm going to really going to be hurt, uh, or, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make it, or whatever it is, right? So the phrases are running in the head, they're a narrative, a linguistic narrative of point of view of the world, right? And then this might also generate images, sensory images, which are again mental, but are it's a little different than the talking mind. Sensory mental images are like um, they're like little movies in the mind, except in all the senses, mainly visual. But these images can be, you know, they can take us back to a time when we were scared. It can take us to a childhood moment and we'll see the pictures of it and we might hear the sounds of someone yelling at us or whatever it is, right? We might feel the, you know, we'll imagine the pain, we might imagine a smell. So we have two different types of mental activity here. We have mental talk and mental image. And again, with respect to emotions, especially traumatic emotions, the mental image is a robust, it can be a robust multi-sensory imagining. And these three things feed into each other. If you drink a bunch of coffee in the morning and you get kind of jittery, you're like, it's just coffee. I've got coffee. So the mind could say, I'm, I, oh, I had a lot of coffee. That's why I'm jittery, right? But maybe you forget that you had coffee and the mind goes, oh, I think I'm nervous. I'm really jittery. And then once you said you think you're nervous, then the mind starts generating images of why you might be nervous. What could be going on? Why did I, why am I nervous? Oh, it's because I've got, I've got something I got to do later. Oh, I'm nervous about what I've got to do later. Now your mind has got generating a movie and talking about that movie of something scary going to happen. And the body goes, Ooh, this is scary. This movie I'm watching is kind of scary. So it gets a little more jittery. Right? And now it's a little more activated, a little more jittery. And so the mind goes, wow, I'm really freaked out about this. This must be really scary. There must be something I might, I'm probably going to lose whatever it is or whatever I'm going to get hurt or whatever it is, right? Okay. This is how emotion works. I'm using fear because it's nice and strong, but they all work this way. They're, they're using all our internal, the internal mind and internal emotional self to generate a perspective on the world. Right. So let's just think, I want to just make sure we're clear about this. One way of thinking about an emotion is it's a loop or a complex loop of, of relationships between talking mind, imagining mind, and emotional feel in the body. And we'll come to this in a second, but that gives you ideas how you might work with it. First of all, you want to be aware that that's what the emotion is made of. It's made up of these three things. And maybe you're really good at catching the thoughts, but you're totally unaware that there's a physical aspect to it. And then it'd be useful to come become aware of that. Um, 
likewise with the image any any of the three you could be missing but it also can be that if you stop if you really focus in on one of those and you spend some time getting clear about one aspect of these three, you can short circuit the loop, at least in the present moment. So if you take away the pictures and the images, then, you, then it stops having as much force. If you relax the body, it stops having as much force. If you start hearing, oh, I'm saying it's scary, but that's just the words, then it stops having as much force. So it gives you three different ways to approach the emotion in the present moment. To talk about how we were talking about it last week, it gives you three different ways of being with the emotion. Well, it's more than three, right? So you could be with any one of these individual things. You could be with two of the individual things. You could be with all three at once. So all these different ways of starting to work with the emotion, of accepting the emotion. But since you're working with emotion, you do need to be aware that it is all three parts. And by the way, it's not an emotion without all three parts. Not really, not a human emotion. As I said, the physical body could be jittery because of coffee. That's not an emotion yet. But when you start adding the images and the talk up, uh, up above, then that jitteriness that came from the coffee becomes an emotion. It has to have all three. And why is that? So we're going to look at emotion in one other way now. It's because emotion has a, be has a belief system and a desire with it. So emotions are also have a belief and I've already, I put that in terms of a point of view already. So it's like a way it sees the world, some part of the world and it has desires. And this is really important. An emotion is designed evolutionarily to get us to act, to do something. That's why they're so powerful because they're, they are old systems that are like, Hey, this is how we survive is in these kinds of circumstances we got to do this kind of thing. The most obvious are going to be fight or flight types of behaviors. But there are other ones. Love is another, you know, certain types of love or lust or types, types of emotion that have obvious desires associated with that. Okay, so the emotion manifests in the talking mind, the imagining mind, and the emotional body. And what is manifesting is a belief and a point of view. Uh, I'm sorry, a belief that is a point of view and a desire. So another way of being with an emotion, and I do encourage everybody to go back and it's on YouTube, the, the, the class we had last week, we talked about five different ways of being with our emotion. And that's sort of a meditation oriented way of being with your emotion. Well, once you've, once you've sort of decided what way you're going to be with your emotion for the day, it's important to realize all the, these different ways of being with the emotion. So you could be with the belief of the emotion. Could be really like, what am I believing? Like, what does this emotion actually believe? Now, fear believes you're in danger. Okay, so the emotional fear believes that you are, that danger is present. And if you really get clear about fear and you look really closely, you'll, you'll see that all, all the way down, even if you're just anxious that someone's not going to be nice to you, fear either believes you're, fear either generally believes you're going to die. It generally sort of generally believes, okay? So even if you're like nervous about going on a date, it, it generally believes you're going to die. <clears throat> But that's the general thing. So we, as I said, all emotions are very specific and unique. So that's the general way of thinking about it. But you want to go in and specifically go, well, what am I, like, what is that? What is the, my point of view? Oh yeah, my point of view is that if I go on this date, this person's going to see me and they're going to see that I'm awful. And once they see I'm awful, everyone will know I'm awful. And then I'll have no more friends. Oh, and then I'll have no money. And then I'll be living on the street and then I'll die. Right. Okay. Like if you follow it all the way, right. And you don't always have to go all the way, but that's where it goes, right. To, to feel all the way into the point of view, like what is scary about this? This is hard because the second we start to get into the beliefs, the feeling gets louder. 
So this is why we don't investigate our emotions this way. Because if I start to go, what am I really scared of? It requires me to say, I think they're going to hate me, which is a really scary thing to say. And then your body gets more scared. This is a, 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 an important feature of working with our emotions that to pay attention to them will make them bigger in the short term a lot of the time, at least the difficult ones. It will make them get louder temporarily. That's actually a good sign. Now, you don't want to be overwhelmed. If you're overwhelmed, it doesn't do any good. But if you can sit with the emotion getting bigger and really feel what's there, then you can start to process it. So that was an example of a belief part of the system. So hate is a belief that, you know, that, um, yeah, that someone is bad. Anger isn't a belief that someone has wronged you. I'm just giving generic things. Um, if you're really angry, then somebody has done something wrong to you or your, the things that are under your protection, right? Um, you know, the other, there's others that are more obvious. So they have these beliefs associated with them. And then they have desires. That's another way you could talk to the emotion. You could ask, what do you want me to do? And again, generically, it's usually going to be some kind of fight, flight, freeze, or, or, or some desire to connect with human beings on the positive sides of the emotion. So I'm sort of talking about the negative emotions, the ones we don't love, but it's, it all works the same with the positive emotions. Um, anger can have a, has a protective quality. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. Oh, sorry. Michelle was telling, saying anger, there's something I need to protect. Um, and that's true. But if you're angry at someone, you got to remember, it's not just about the need to protect because that would just be fear. Like I'm, I'm like, I got to protect something. Anger is directed at someone or something in particular who is a danger to that thing you're trying to protect. So just remember that. I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but when we're, when we're talking about anger, it's separate from fear and they get really close to each other because the fear of the, of the thing can lead to anger very quickly. Once you find someone to, you know, to, to blame for the fear you're feeling. Okay. Uh, then though it switches to that person is going to wrong me. That is they're they're going to hurt the thing I want to protect or myself or whatever it is. Um, but as I was saying, we, we can work with this also by asking, what does the, the emotion actually want and getting very clear about what that is. Again, it's not right or wrong with these emotions. It's what they, it, we have to first see what they are, what they're actually made of to be with them, to accept them so we can process them. Sometimes we do what they want once we figure out what it is, because that's just the simplest way to go through it. And it's healthy and it can be totally healthy. Right. Um, so what does the fear want? Oh, it does not. Simply, it's like, oh, it wants me not to go on this date. It's like, I don't want to go out of the house. <laughs> it's like simply just stay home and not hide. You know, we get a little closer. And it's like, I want to hide. I, do, I want to not be seen. Mm. I want to protect myself. Right? So it's like, okay, well, you can start to move in that direction. You can ask, okay, so if I just stay home, will the fear go away? And sometimes it will. And that's where social anxiety will keep people in their house for, for extended periods of time because they're like, oh yeah, I, I don't feel the fear if I don't go out. Great. And that's fine. But we start to get conscious about that. We're like, okay, well, is there, you know, if I go out in the world, what, what does this fear want? Does it want me to just to turn around and go home or what does it want specifically? What is it? How does it want me and my body to move? You might find the fear wants you to curl up in a ball, or all sorts of things. If you're actually on the date and you're feeling the fear, what does this fear want me to do right now? Right? Again, just because you know what it wants doesn't mean you, you need to do what it wants, but you can, by acknowledging what it wants, you bring it into the open and it allows it to re meet reality. Because right? often our desires and beliefs of our fears are not in contact with reality, right? They're, they're a movie we've made privately in our mind that have some, they're taking a little bit of reality, right? And they're using it as a seed to blow up a big, big story, right? And so if we just live in the story without, if we are in the emotion without being conscious of all the elements of the emotion, then what we actually think is happening is we're just... We're in, the, we, we're in the world of the emotion at that point. 
So whatever belief or desires the emotion has are just reality. So until we are conscious of how that emotion is being created, oh, I'm having these thoughts and these pictures in my mind, not in the world. Those are pictures aren't in the world. Those pictures are in my mind, right? The picture of that person hating me is in my mind, right? And this feeling in my body is in my body. It's not actually in the world. It doesn't mean that it can't be right or there can't be something true to it or that it's not that we, we need to push it down. That's not what it means. But by being conscious of how it's being created in us, then we get to compare it and separate it and disentangle it from what's actually happening in the world. Oh, there's a person there. And, you know, are they, are they actually hating me? Here's the picture of what I see them doing. And here's what they're actually doing. I'm like, oh, that those don't actually map up. And it can start to quiet the emotion down as you start to dissolve the sense that it's real or as you start to undermine the belief not by intentionally arguing with it, but just by living consciously. Okay, so let me recap this. Our emotions are loops and they're self-reinforcing loops between emotions and the feelings in the body that are sort of emotional words in our head that are telling a story that fits the emotional perspective imaginings in the mind that are either of the past or of a possible future or of a way the present moment is that we're imagining right that can be in visual most strongly in visual but it can have all the senses as a kind of imagining and these three types of sensory experience come together to create the, the, the multi-sensory movie of the emotion. Very compelling movie. First of all, because most of the time we don't realize it's a movie. It presents itself as reality. Okay, so we can interact with any three of those things, become aware. And if we're having a lot of emotion in our life, just be really clear. Okay, what, what is this? Just, just, you have to be patient. I'm having this emotion over and over. Okay, what is, what is, how is it made up of in the body? Oh, this emotion is, oh, it's here. It's like here all the time. And it's kind of vibratory and it wants to move this way and it's hot. Oh, and then it gets cold and, and um, there's a little spot here that's numb. Okay, that's the body. And then the mind, it has, a, it repeats these phrases a lot. It says this a lot. Okay, it's really a story about this. Um, and it, oh, there's this one strong image that keeps coming up. Okay, then you start to just go, okay, that's where it is. Now you can't be approaching these like, I got to get rid of this. Otherwise, they won't show you what's there, right? You can't be trying to, you have to work with the emotion with, the, with acceptance. This is what I'm feeling. That's one way to work with it. And then the other way is to realize that emotions are beliefs and desires. They are a set of beliefs that's a, that presents a point of view of the world or some part of the world. And they are desires about, they are motivations to behave in a certain way. And you can then also ask, so what is the belief, what is the view, what is the point of view of this emotion? How is it seeing the world? And somewhere down the line, you can also, you can not argue with it, but you can just sort of actually look at the world and compare it to the point of view. Also, what do I want? What does this emotion really want me to do? What if I did what it wanted, wanted, wanted me to do? What if I did a little bit of what it wanted me to do? What if I just sat here and imagined doing what it wanted me to do? How does that change the emotion? So hopefully that's useful. That's sort of two different ways of, of, of conceptualizing the structure of emotion. And there's a third way there, if you, if you remember what I said at the beginning, that this is old evolutionary systems and the most new evolutionary systems all sort of working together to create points of view and behaviors. And that's why it's very complex, it can be very complex. Okay, good. So we're going to sit now.